Hello, my name is Alan Fu, and today I'm going to talk about probabilistic and deterministic volumetric estimates in oil and gas fields. So this is uh, one of my correspondents, Mohammed Zahid in Pakistan, asked me what was the difference between deterministic and probabilistic estimates for oil and gas resources. A lot of his students watch my videos, which I'm very grateful for. So I've decided to answer this in the form of a video. Now, there are two things here. Now, a deterministic estimate is a single discrete model, so one shot. This is an answer. Now, it could be several different answers. You can vary the parameters to make several deterministic estimates, but it's still a discrete single answer. Whereas um, a stochastic estimate is a range of models with distribution of outcomes. Again, uh, you need to put several different inputs in there and gives you an idea of where a result would be on a distribution in order to make better decisions. Now, they're both useful and they both have pros and cons, and I'll discuss these. So I'll just briefly go through the volumetric equation. I've got a video that explains all of that. So hydrocarbon place is the gross rock volume multiplied by the net to gross, which is the proportion of rock that can contain hydrocarbons, multiplied by the porosity, that's the holes in the rock that contain hydrocarbons, multiplied by the saturation because the holes are not entirely full of hydrocarbon. They have some water in them as well. Uh, formation volume factor, because gas expands when you bring it to the surface, oil shrinks. So that gives you the hydrocarbon in place, but you're never going to get all of it out. Uh, it needs to apply a recovery factor. I've got a video on recovery factors as well, so please watch that one for that. So that gives you the volumetric equation. So that's the that's what we're basically looking at. Now, deterministic models, as I said earlier, give you a discrete single scenario. Now, you can have several discrete uh, models by varying certain parameters within the volumetric equations. For example, you can weigh the porosity up and down, you can vary the curves up and down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, the advantage of deterministics is they're fairly quick and easy to do. You can do it on a spreadsheet. But you don't need any specialist software like GeoX or Crystal Ball to do it. Disadvantage is several models, you can take some time to run several models, and you don't get a distribution of outcomes until you, unless you get a lot of models. Um, well, that's that's where you are and you don't fully understand what you are even if you do get quite a few models you know a dozen you don't really understand where they are whereas a stochastic model gives you thousands potentially so um, in stochastic modeling in geoxa crystal ball each one of these elements the gross rock volume the net to gross the porosity the saturation the volumetric factors the gas expansion factor oil shrinkage factor non-hydrocarbon fraction if you have significant portions of nitrogen or CO2, the recovery factors, they're all modeled stochastically. So effectively, what you do is you create a distribution for all of these, and then you get an outcome, which will have P50, P90, which is the low case, P50, which is the median case, and P10, which is the high case, as well as a mean output, which is the average, arithmetic average of all of the above. Now, let's look at a little bit as to what the inputs are and how it works. So effectively, you have distribution for this, GRV, net to gross, distribution for porosity, distribution for saturation, distribution for the magic factor that gives you the hydrocarbon in place range. Multiply that by distribution with recovery factor and gives you recoverable resources. So again, you assign each one of these a distribution using a Monte Carlo method to produce an outcome distribution for both hydrocarbon in place and recoverable resources. So where do you get the inputs? Uh, gross rock volume comes from seismic mapping, so you get top structure from the mapping. Unit thickness from geological modeling, it's the below seismic resolution, you know, below about 100 meters. Uh, hydrocarbon volume, uh, hydrocarbon water contact from column height modeling. Possibly if there's a DHI flat spot, you will use that. And I have a video on uh, DHI flat spots as well. Net of gross from sedimentology, porosity from sedimentology. Comparing everything to adjacent wells, there are some give you distribution of what's possible. Saturation from petrophysical models, um, some extent from the porosity model. The two are related. Formation volume factor will come from reservoir engineer, depends on depth of burial and fluid uh, uh, type. And recovery factor would come from the reservoir engineer. Parameter ranges that you need to put for the inputs. Now, typically you would put in three cases. In a few cases, you may use a single parameter, that's justified, but that's actually fairly rare. So a low case should be lower but viable. So, for example, let's say if your porosity cutoff is 10%, uh, don't put a 5% porosity in there because it clearly isn't going to happen. That's just taken care of and you're risking. Mid case is what you're most likely estimate. If someone asks you for a single answer, this is what you would give them. And a high case should be higher than that, but obviously not fantastical. You know, you're not going to get 35% porosities at 5 kilometer burial, just not going to happen. Uh, and the, you know, realistic circumstances. So 
again, have a range, have it reasonably wide, but again, has a sensible. Then you look at uh, distribution types. So again, how you distribute the parameters within there. So a rectangle is effectively a single case. So that's what you would, you would do. I mean, some things like GeoX, for instance, gets you a chance to input a single value. Uh, triangle is low, mid, high. Again, triangles can be skewed either way. This one is skewed a little bit towards the low side, but you can have it as, a, as an equilateral triangle. Normal distribution is um, bell curve, which was what you'd expect. So again, a low, a high, and a mid. A log normal is skewed here in this case towards the low side. So this will be your most likely, this will be your low case and your high case will be off here somewhere for the situation where that can happen. And betas are different types of distribution, similar to log normal, where you have a low skew or high skew. Again, it depends on what you think is going to happen. Most people will tend to go either for beta or log normal. In a few cases, normal, again, triangle or rectangular may be suitable. But again, look at the geology and look at what's possible. So a bit of fun, you know, skew you, skew you, can't we all behave normally in two rather annoyed beta distributions. Uh, day 31st of uh, October, Halloween, so paranormal distributions might be appropriate. And again, obviously, this guy takes... Um, looking at Gauss and normal distributions a wee bit too far building a church in that sort of shape. So maybe, maybe not. Then how dependent are the parameters? Now you can set dependencies within GeoX and Crystal Ball between the different parameters. Um, dependency can be full, strong or weak. So for example, there's a strong dependency between saturation and porosity. Uh, you can, uh, you know, uh, you have high water saturations, low hydrocarbon saturations in uh, small, poor, uh, lower porosity rock. Uh, but things like net to gross and porosity may be completely independent. You may have uh, relatively few, but relatively uh, sand stringers within a body where you have, have relatively low net to gross with some channels and a few overbanks, but the channels may have high porosity within them. Probability distributions can also be truncated. So, you know, you can't have porosity that's negative or greater than one, ditto with saturations and net to grosses. Um, but the thing to bear in mind within a probabilistic uh, estimation is each element is the same with the whole prospect. So single analysis, you don't have any spatial variability like you would in a, in a geological reservoir model. Um, and then you will get the outcomes. So this is a typical outcome distribution. So P10, P50 median, uh, P90. So this is your potential set of outcomes in, in the dark colors here shaded. And this is your probability of exceedance curve. So P90 is here, P50 is here, that's the median, and P10 is here, and the mean would represent an average of all the results. So if someone asks you for a single number, the mean is the number, uh, but P50, P90 in a range is far more valuable than just having the mean. So when you're looking at appraising fields, you're looking at uh, a situation where you have some information. Probabilistic information, uh, Distributions can be quite useful within that field as well, because actually reasonably quick to goo compared to building a basic reservoir model, which can take weeks or months because of uh, the detailed geological work required. You can run some sensitivities within that on GRV, porosity, etc. So you can move the contacts up and down, you can change the porosities, and you try to produce a tornado chart, which I'll show you a picture of in a minute, uh, to figure out what the uncertainties actually are. You can use area depth curves to try to select an appraisal well. Again, I have a video of gross rock volume where I talk a little bit about that. Uh, so how much volume do you need to prove up with each well? And you can roll up segments. So you have undrilled segments and drilled segments within. Uh, so let's say you have several fault blocks within a, a structure. The first fault block has been drilled. If we have proven hydrocarbons in that well, how much value are the other fault blocks which haven't yet been drilled? Now, obviously, they still have some risk, but a lot less risk than they did before drilling because you've proven some of the hydrocarbon system. You do obviously need the special software, the GeoX, Crystal Balls, etc., and others are probably available. And again, as I said before, all the properties are averaged over the entire field, so you can't take any known variations, i.e. if you've got several wells, you're trying to match seismic data for porosity or thickness, for example, into account. And recovery guesses are, uh, are still best guessed by a reservoir engineer rather than building a model, which is slightly more sophisticated guessed by a reservoir engineer. And you can't take reservoir fluid behavior into you producing production profiles. So it's a bit simplistic, but it's very useful for doing that. And for example, you'll end up with something like your tornado chart, so this is an example here. We're looking at hydrocarbon column height, which is gross rock volume is always, always, almost always the best, uh, biggest uncertainty within hydrocarbon estimation. Your recovery factor, net to gross, etc. So you can see where you want to put the effort into further 
geological and geophysical work, try to reduce uncertainties to a manageable level. So other thing to think about is your range wide enough. So you've got your low case, your mid case, and your high case. But look back at pre-drill estimates um, of uh, prospects, and the post-drill results tend to be skewed to the uh, low, i.e. outcomes tend to be lower than predicted. Ranges tend to be a bit narrower, and gross rock volumes usually most of the overestimated and successful discoveries. So again, look at your gross rock volume more than anything else, and just ask yourself questions. Is the range wide enough? Have we captured all reasonable possibilities? Just have a think. Have a chat. But probabilistic is confined really to here. So this is the uh, production life cycle. So exploration, appraisal, development of production. So probabilistic is confined to here where you're doing estimates and GeoX for multiple scenarios. You have slightly more constraint, obviously, when you appraise. But eventually, you will build reservoir models. You'll do uncertainties within reservoir models. Um, they're effectively multi-deterministic. You'll build reservoir simulation models and something like Eclipse, History Match, etc. So your cone of uncertainty goes down with uh, production life. So thank you very much. Please like, please subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.